Hi friends, welcome to Homegrown and Homemade, the show. Season one, episode one, I am so excited you're here. I cannot wait to start this project with you. It is gonna be so much fun. This is going to be a lifestyle and cooking show that makes cooking just good, wholesome food, approachable and fun. We are going to celebrate intentional living and make every dish tell a story with your family. First up on our episode is going to be game day snacks. Super Bowl is approaching, so I'm going to be sharing a fun snack board with veggies and hummus, and also going to share a recipe for a focaccia bread with you. So good, it's delicious. So let's get started and dive into what we're gonna need for our bread and our snack dough and get everything set up. Okay, to get started with our focaccia bread, it is a super simple bread to make, so do not be overwhelmed at the thought of making homemade bread. Just follow along and you're going to have a tasty bread in no time. So you're gonna need a gluten-free flour blend. I usually like Bob's Red Mill or King Arthur Baking. Their one for one cup um, substitute is perfect for baking. You're gonna need some almond flour, salt, olive oil, warm water, a quick rise yeast, and that's it. Oh, salt, did I say salt? I don't remember. So we are going to first measure two cups of flour. And when you measure flour, you can take a knife, tap it, and then scrape off the top. That's considered leveling your scoop. So we're gonna do two cups of gluten-free flour. Then um, one cup of almond flour. I have found that adding in almond flour kind of gives a good like chew to your bread. It gives it a little bit of texture. Um, if you don't have almond flour, I'm pretty sure you could do just three cups of regular flour, but try the almond flour. It's pretty good. Kind of hard. Normally I have this in a container, but I went on a like cleaning spree in my pantry and I need to find a container for this. So one cup of almond flour. We're going to use two teaspoons of instant yeast. The instant yeast allows you to mix this yeast in without first activating it in your warm water. If you have a traditional yeast, then you would have to mix that with some water to activate it. And then a little bit of salt. Oh, I forgot sugar. I'll go grab that. One and a half teaspoons of salt. <clears throat> this recipe will be on my blog and any recipe that you see on the show. It's very simple, tinashawnfelt.com. You'll be able to find all of the recipes with a printable um, option on there. Let me grab my sugar. <clears throat> it takes just a little bit of sugar, a teaspoon of sugar. You could also sub in honey when you add your wet ingredients if you don't want to use regular sugar. Okay, now we're going to take a whisk and whisk it all up. If you don't have a whisk, use a fork. A fork works well for mixing, but basically what we're just doing is incorporating all of your dry ingredients together and making sure they're all blended. Get some of the little clumps out from the almond flour. All right. Now, okay, so we're going to add our warm water. You want it to be warm enough to activate the yeast, but not too hot that it's gonna kill it. So um, I like to picture it as if you can like touch it and not be burned, then it's pretty good. So you're gonna add in one cup of water and then a quarter cup of olive oil. I love pouring it out of this thing. 
quarter cup measure. And now we're gonna get a big spoon and just combine that into a rough dough. The dough is gonna be really sticky, that's okay. But basically you just want to combine it all to where um, you don't have any major flower spots left. Now at this step, you could add some herbs and flavors to it. The possibilities are endless. If you want like a cilantro focaccia, you could add that in. If you want a rosemary with some garlic, then you can add that in. I think that that's what I'm gonna do with this one. I'm gonna add some chopped rosemary and a little bit of garlic and it's going to turn out so good. Okay, so we're gonna do about a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then I don't have any fresh rosemary right now because it's all frozen back from the freeze. So I'm gonna do some dried. I would say let's do about, um, honestly, you could just measure with your heart. Maybe one to two teaspoons. And then just kind of fold that in on itself. Oops. Mm, I already smells so good. Rosemary and garlic. So let's, our dough is fully like added together. You don't have to make it into a ball, but I find that it's easier to uh, see the size when it's kind of in a good uniform space. So we're just gonna kind of put it in a little ball here, cover it with a damp towel and um, let it sit and rise for about one hour or until it's puffy and about um, double in size. I like to put mine in the oven with the light on helps it to have a safe space and um, not get disturbed by anything. All right, while the focaccia is on the rise, I'm gonna clean this up and get ready to make our snack board. quick chat about bread and the misconception that even I had when I first started baking my own bread is that it is this long drawn out process that is difficult and overwhelming and I just can never make my own bread. I've been there. Um, yes, it is a process. You are going to have to have some time to devote to your bread, but a lot of that time is letting it sit and do its thing. So the actual hands-on activities are pretty minimal and then you just have to let it sit for a while. So for this focaccia bread, it's a relatively short time for bread. It's about two hours because our first rise, we're gonna give it an hour, then we're gonna put it in the pan, give it that classic little massage, it's not the right word, um, I don't know, you put little dents in it and then drizzle it with some olive oil. Then you're gonna let it sit again and get a little bit more puffy. So that's about 30 minutes and then it's 30 minutes to bake it. So if you just plan that out and know, okay, I need two total hours, there's lots of stuff that you can get done in between there. So if you want some fresh bread for your game day, you could start this in the morning and then have it ready by the time it's game time or even at the afternoon. So like I'm doing right now, get your dough made, let it sit, and then do your other things while you're waiting Along for it. Along with our focaccia bread, I am going to put out a rainbow of colors. I love a good presentation of veggies. I have got some really good ones for dipping in our hummus, and they're gonna complement our rosemary bread so good. I've got some fresh broccoli, some different colored bell peppers, some uh, 
small tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, some cucumbers, baby carrots, celery, and of course, some delicious Ithaca hummus. So my friends at Ithaca sent out some coupons to get some free tubs of hummus to use in this episode. I have told them that I'm going to be featuring their, featuring their product in this first episode. And they sent me the sweetest card that said, hi Tina, enjoy. Can't wait to follow the new YouTube series. So I am so thankful for their support and their contribution of their amazing hummus for this episode. Y'all, if you have not tried it yet, I can promise you it is like no other hummus out there. I will go out of my way to go to the stores that carry this because it is that good. They have a variety of flavors. This one is the lemon garlic, the lemon beet, and lemon dill. Lemon dill is one of my favorites. They are all good. They have other flavors too. These are just the ones that my store had. So they are going to make a great centerpiece for our snack board here. I started talking and my phone died. So um, as I was saying, when I arrange the board, I like to have all my veggies laid out and I kind of like things to be symmetrical and kind of like put varieties of colors next to each other. You can do whatever you want. There is no rules when it comes to food presentation. It should be fun, it should be no stress, just arranging your fun pieces everywhere. Together, you kind of fill in the gaps as you go and again there's no rules when it comes to presentation you can make it however you want it to be y'all I can't wait to dive in cleanup crew on aisle one Chopped a broccoli and a carrot. To check our bread. Miss Ivy, what do you think? Do you think it's time for the bread? Ivy. Hi. How's the bread doing? Fabulous. Okay. Let us see what it looks like. All right some puff to it. It's looking good. Almost time. All right y'all, our dough is done with its first rise. We are going to take a 13 by 9 pan or a big brown cast iron pan or a pizza pan. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom and I like to take a little bit of a paper towel to kind of at the bottom. We are going to take our dough and place it in the bottom of this pan and kind of flatten it out to make the shape match the shape of the pan. And if it's sticky you can put um, some olive oil on your hands. Oh, I don't know why it's, it doesn't have to be perfect. <clears throat> and again, this is more of a flatbread, so you're not worried about 
this real puffy, big um, piece of bread, it's going to be relatively flat. So now we've got it flattened in here. I have gone ahead and preheated my oven. We're gonna preheat it for 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And at this point, this is where you can like dimple your dough. Um, <laughs> my nails are creating indentions. Um, maybe, yeah, we'll use that. So you're just making little impressions in the dough. It's going to give it that classic focaccia look. Okay, now we're gonna drizzle it with some olive oil over the top. Some rosemary, again, if you have some fresh rosemary, you can use fresh. Oh, y'all, this smells so good already. Over the rosemary on top. And then um, you can use some coarse sea salt. This is some sea salt flakes that I like. Whenever I'm doing kind of sea salt for presentation on top, it just gives it a cool like look to it. You know, that's it. We're gonna let it sit for about 20 more minutes to get a little more puffy. And then we're gonna pop that baby in the oven. Wanted to send you a little sneak peek. It is officially golden hour and the sun is just pouring in the kitchen here. Let's check our Akasha, look, it's looking nice and fluffy and ready to bake. All right, y'all, this beautiful bread is going in the oven. So the bread is going to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes, and you will know that it's ready when the top is a nice golden brown and the sides start to pull away from the pan. So can't see y'all. <laughs> the sun is just so gorgeous, so I'm just gonna leave it. So we're gonna wait for that to cook and then we'll take it out, let it cool a minute, chop it up, and add it to our snack board. Moment of truth. Here is our delicious bread. Y'all, look at that. It is so good and the smell. Mm. Okay, so what we're going to do now is leave this in the pan for just a couple of minutes to give it a minute to cool. I have a bit of a habit of walking away while I'm talking. Um, so we're going to let it cool for a minute, pull it out of the pan, uh, cut it into, I think squares would be good for this tray, and then we'll be ready to enjoy it. <music> kind of fill in our nice bread onto our tray. Literally perfection right there. So that is a wrap on our game day snack board. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Again, you can find the recipe for the bread on the my website. And the last and final step before you set this out for your guest or yourself is to open your hummus containers, give a little stir for presentation. You could even get some cute little dishes if you want, but let's just save the dirty dishes. And if you have any little pieces of bread that break off, now they're the perfect. Mm. Perfect sampling. 
pieces. Let me know if you make this. I want to see your pictures, tag me, and I hope you have a great Super Bowl. Thank you.